Hey, it's AP, and today we're going to make a bookcase. Check it out. Now our kids love to read. Well, they like being read to. They don't read just yet. But that means we have tons of books in this house. So my wife set me to task to build a bookcase. Now she's a big fan of the Montessori style of education. Now not to oversimplify what Montessori is, but Montessori is really about emphasizing independence, allowing kids the ability to initiate their own learning structure within a well-prepared learning environment. Thank you, Wikipedia. Now this means that books are typically exposed, cover out, giving kids the opportunity to pick whatever they want to read and whatever they want to learn about versus what we want to impose upon them. Now there are lots of Montessori style open face bookcases out there. You could easily go and buy your own and spend a couple hundred dollars doing that. Or for under a hundred dollars, you could build your own. And you know me, I'm a DIY kind of guy. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go sketch out the design of the bookcase. So the design of the bookcase is going to be 45 inches wide and then it's going to be almost like a staircase right probably better if i did this on a uh, yeah All right so it'll be 45 inches wide. I, we're going to use one by eight for these. Uh, so anywhere between 28 and 30 inches tall. Yeah. Okay, let's get dirty. Now we're making this out of stock pine, primarily because it's, it's the cheaper of the woods, but it's also what I had in stock. Now what stinks about stock pine is that it's typically rough edges, knotty, and so you have to spend more time at the beginning of the process to you know, sand it down, smooth it out, find the best pieces of wood within your stick to use, and it just takes a little bit more time. Now I could have used premium pine or birch plywood, but that would have you know, in some instances doubled the cost. Uh, you know, you can get a stick of uh, one by three by eight for mm, say $10 um, of the stock pine, or you could get the premium one by three by eight for $20, you know, 15 to $20. So it's really, if you have the money and you want to go that route, go that route. Uh, if you want to save money, go the stock route. Just know that you're going to have to spend a little bit more time at the beginning to smooth it all out. All right, so let's dive right in and start cutting these sticks down to the appropriate length. So this design is pretty much like a staircase, except with very thin um, treads. So the treads are going to be about three inches wide, and then the, the riser in between is going to be about eight inches tall. It's going to be 45 inches wide total. And so again, to for easy transportation, I picked up the stock pine, and I'm going to be able to get... So I picked up um, one by three and one by eight, and I picked up the um, eight foot sticks because I'll be able to get two shelves out of each of those sticks. Uh, and then whatever's left over, I'll use for another project. And then the sides, I'm going to use a, a quarter inch birch plywood because I just have some left over. And uh, again, it's about keeping the cost down for this. So I'm gonna start cutting these down to 45 inches. And then, uh, and then we'll start sanding them and trying to get them into shape. For the, the pine, so this is stock pine. And if you look carefully at your lumber yard, you'll actually be able to find some decent faced stock pine. This actually is one by three by six. And I have a good five feet before I get to this knot here. So I'm going to use the nice side of this. If you spend some time in the lumber yard looking at the, uh, you know, the stock wood, you can find in shape pine. And again, it's going to be less than the premium stuff. Now, 
Now that all the wood is cut, I'm gonna run the tops of the risers through the router. Uh, I'm just gonna use a quarter inch roundover bit and that'll make the sharp edges become nice and round so my daughter doesn't hurt herself when she goes to reach for those books. Uh, plus it'll make the bookcase, um, it'll add a little bit more character to the bookcase because you have this extra little design detail to it. So let's, uh, let's run this through. Now that all my boards are cut, I'm going to start putting the pocket holes, um, pocket hole holes, is that what they're called? Pocket holes, pocket hole screws go into a pocket hole. Okay. Now that all my boards are cut, I'm going to start putting in the holes for my pocket hole screws. Uh, these are going to go into the, the bottom of each shelf in that little step design. Uh, and so I'm going to put in four pocket holes per board. And I'm just going to space them roughly, I'm gonna do four inches in from the ends and then 17 inches in from the end. That should give me a decent amount of space in between each one. All right. All right, my pocket holes are done. Now I'm just gonna sand everything down with a 120 grit sandpaper and then start putting it together. The 120 grit is just really to knock all the high points down and get it ready for the stain, uh, which we'll be doing after I put the bulk of the pieces together. So let's do that. All right, let's get dusty. Now that all the wood is sanded down, I'm ready to start gluing and screwing this all together. Uh, to do that, I'm going to be using a combination of glue, uh, one and one quarter inch pocket hole screws, and then uh, one and five eighths inch regular interior wood screws. And pretty much the pattern that I'm going for is I have the, I'll have the back and then I'll have this piece, we'll kind of, we'll use the pocket holes for that. And then when we have the other side, we'll do the straight screws through. Like that. Another thing to point out is if you're using stock, um, stock pine, it's going to have a little warp to it as well. At least some of these boards do. So I'm going to have to do a lot of pulling to uh, get them to be straight, but with the glue, between the glue and the pocket hole screws, that should hopefully shore everything up. Oh, and you may notice that I have this uh, piece of half inch uh, plywood over my, my desk, my, um, my workbench. That's because I wanted something that I know is flat and even level and that'll help me keep everything nice and straight. A future project will be to create a new workbench that I do trust, but this is what I have for now, so. So now I'm going to start putting in the pilot holes in the backs of the, uh, the eight inch risers. And what I'm going to then do is screw these pieces together. So they're just gonna go straight through that way. But I want to do some pilot holes first so I don't split the wood. Uh, for that, I'm just using a countersunk uh, drill bit to make it nice and flush on the back. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully I don't screw anything up in the process. Okay. 
Now you're probably wondering, AP, how are you going to figure out the dimensions of the sides of the bookcase? Well, watcher, I'm going to tell you. I pretty much just took my three quarter inch, two foot by four foot piece of uh, birch plywood, laid it on the ground, and then I took my shelves and put it on top of that. And from here, I'm going to sketch out the angle of my bookcase. It's really easy. And uh, I'm going to cut out, it's going to be about an inch. Yeah, we're going to do an inch out. Go up, we're going to rise up to the first shelf and then cut at an angle to the top shelf with another inch margin and then cut across. And we will then have one side. I'll take that piece out, flip it, scribe that out, cut it from the other side, and then I'll have two sides to my bookcase. It all sounds very easy, right? Right, yeah, it's easy. There's no way this can go wrong. Okay. Now that the sides are complete, I just need to attach them to the main shelf structure and then we can start staining and polyurethaning the bookcase. So the shelf is all together now uh, and I'm ready to start staining it. I'm going to first wipe it down with some warm water just to help perk up the grain a little bit. Um, if I put the stain on without doing a pre-stained conditioner or, or putting some water on it to get the, the grain to pop, the, um, the stain could come up a little bit muddier uh, and I want a nice uniform stain across the bookshelf, of course. So, you can either use a pre-stain conditioner. My, my, my local hardware store didn't have any. Uh, so you can use water that is just as effective from what I've experienced and heard. Uh, so that's what we're just gonna do. Plus it helps get the, uh, any rogue, um, helps get any rogue sawdust off of the wood. <laughs> so let's give this thing a bath. I'm just going to stain it with a something. Okay, so I'm ready to stain, and the color I chose was a um, was golden pecan. It's uh, or pecan, and uh, which is really out of my comfort zone because I usually just stain things black, <laughs> ebony black, painted black. So this is kind of going outside of my my stain preferred color palette, but uh, this is what my wife wants and my wife is my boss, so. Okay. Uh, all right, we're gonna stir this up nice and good. It looks so dark. Oh, it's gonna come out nice. I hope it doesn't dry this dark.
So the stain's dried, and now I'm ready to put on my top coat. I'm going to be using uh, triple thick polyurethane from Varathane. Uh, this is the stuff when I started tinkering in the wood shop. Uh, this is the this is kind of like my go-to polyurethane. I'm sure there's better stuff out there, but this works for me. It has an advanced self-leveling formula, which I like, and it's water-based, so it's easy to clean up. Yeah, how cool is that? So to apply the polyurethane, I just need a synthetic brush, and I'm going to go pretty slowly on this because I'm doing a lot of vertical surfaces. I need to avoid pooling at the bottom, so I have to be pretty careful on how I go about doing this. I'll probably be doing a lot of going back and brushing off pools. I hate polyurethane. I just, I, I just, I don't like doing it because I always find a way to screw it up. <sighs> but this is going in a kid's room. It kind of needs polyurethane, right? Okay, let's do it. Well, this bookcase is ready for prime time or uh, quiet time. Library time? Lib? Lib time? Lib time. Whatever. This video is coming out before my daughter's birthday, so I don't have any footage of her really enjoying it just yet. But follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll be sure to upload some reaction videos there in the next week or so. So this is a relatively easy project that you could pound out in a uninterrupted weekend. If you have children, multiply that by 10, seriously. So a couple of things I'll do when I make my next one of these. First, invest in better wood. I used stock pine for this, which is perfectly fine. It's cheap, but it tends to be naughty. It tends to be warped. And uh, when I do this again, I will gladly spend the extra money for either premium pine or look at alternative woods, maybe uh, three-quarter inch plywood to do the entire thing uh, to get the straightest edges possible out of this. The image of the golden pecan on the can was much lighter than what this turned out to be. So in hindsight, I should have done a test swatch before committing to staining the entire thing. I think it came out all right, but my expectation was that this was going to be a much lighter looking bookcase. Again, it looks fine, but a little preparation in advance and testing the stain on a scrap piece of wood would have, you know, reset my expectations for this project. And finally, I'm just gonna add some felt feet to this to protect my hardwood floors. Thanks for watching. If you give this a try, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter so you can get behind the scenes photos and previews of projects that I'm currently working on, as well as continuing the conversation off of YouTube and into the other social spaces. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you can be notified when I upload my next project video. As always, until next time, stop planning and start making. Thanks everybody.